Welcome to our living room. This is from the Disney Couch. We are right in the middle of the quest for the ultimate Disney movie. Today, it is... Swords in the Stone. Woo! I've never seen it. I know you keep telling me that I've seen it because you saw it, but I'm pretty sure I just completely tuned out the movie that time. I've never seen it. Um, I've seen, you know, two or three clips from the Disney compilations on TV when I was a lad, but that's it. I got nothing. Does it have any sports in it? Are you kidding? Fencing, fighting, revenge, torture, giants, monsters, true love, miracles. <laughs> Doesn't sound too bad. I'll try to stay awake. Okay, good. Here we go for Sword in the Stone. <laughs> Expectations were low, <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. I've been to rock bottom, and this wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is, this is not rock bottom of the Disney Animation Studios. Yeah, it was, it was kind of supposed to be a coming-of-age story, I, I think, but I don't know. I wasn't invested in any of the characters. Like, yeah. I, I wasn't feeling it. The character that I think we were the most invested in was that poor girl squirrel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She got her heart broken. <laughs> yeah, we cried at the part where... Okay, I cried. I don't know. I felt I sad felt for the squirrel. Sad too. She discovered that the squirrel... Her true love was she not could be with because he was a human. Yeah. I say they should turn her into a human. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was hoping she'd come yeah. back and save the day somehow. I really feel like the Sword of the Stone should have been just like a collection of shorts. It kind of was. Yeah. So it's almost like the formula that they had right at the beginning of their animation yeah. where it was like these Short disconnected yeah. kind of things and the plot is just very loosely woven through it. Mm -hmm. The boss battle at the end, I think that was my favorite scene. The face-off between Merlin and Mad Madam Mim yeah. and uh, they're turning into different animals. How Merlin won was great, but yeah. yeah I, I like that part, and it, it kind of seems like the whole moral of the story was stay in school, kids. Yeah. Education's good. Yeah. Yeah, I find the whole knowledge wins thing didn't really affect the plot too much. Like, in the end, Wart didn't win the day with knowledge. He was just kind of like, okay, he's gonna have a sword, and he pulls it out of the stone, and poof, he's king. That was it. Like, there was nothing to do with knowledge in that area. Yeah, it's true. Like, yeah. it's, it's like if he could have used the things that he had learned as a bird and a fish, and a squirrel to get the sword, then it would have had a payoff. But as it was, yeah, Merlin got frustrated and he left, and <laughs> then he came back in Bermuda shorts. Yeah. Ooh, I found this one was, it seemed a little off with the yeah. animation quality. It's a little cheap. <laughs> and I think what it was is this is the second movie that they used that handy, nifty Xerox photocopier thing. It was first introduced in the last movie, 101 Dalmatians. And here, it kind of seemed like the animation was very kind of scratchy, and you could see, like, light pencil lines, and it, it detracted <laughs> from the crispness of the animation that was in some of the earlier ones. I don't know. I kind of like that kind of sketchy thing. Mm -hmm. It's Cartoon. good for hair. Like, it gives yeah. the hair more, like, hairiness. <laughs> yes. And we all want right. hairy hair. <laughs> What about that bit with Mad Madam Mim where she turns into like Disney's ideology of a beautiful woman? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, a little waist the size of my wrist. <laughs> yeah. Um, the wolf looked just like the wolf from Peter and the Wolf. Yeah. So you kind of wonder if like they're bringing back a lot of these characters. The owl looked so much like owl or from Bambi maybe. Yeah, there's oh, been yeah. a few owls yeah. and they all kind of look the same. One other thing that I noticed about this one, in the last few movies we've really enjoyed the voice acting, mm -hmm. um, but not so much for this one, oh. you know? Like, particularly uh, Arthur, the voice actor of Arthur. I always wanted to be a bird. <laughs> Going G, Merlin. <laughs> he kind of had this weird, like, nasal. Yeah. New York. Uh, okay, so that was one thing. All the other actors <laughs> in the movie have British accents. Except for Arthur. <laughs> and he was talking like this. And the other weird thing about Arthur 
was that there was three kids that voiced him. Oh, oh yeah, because yeah. there was at least one point I noticed in the movie that his voice shifted. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I kind of noticed. When he was like in peril, he'd be like, Merlin! And then he'd be like, wow, gee, Merlin, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what it was? Ricky, someone or other, that they originally cast for the voice of Arthur, he went through puberty as they're making this movie. And so they're he, like, uh, he can't talk like this anymore? Yeah, his voice didn't crack enough or something. <laughs> or maybe crack too much. Yeah, and so they, they cut the original voice actor halfway through the film, and then the director's two sons got drafted, and they came in to do the rest of the voice acting oh. for the Arthur character, well, which... I don't know, maybe they were not professional actors. <laughs> to the chart! The kiss. There was a couple kisses. The squirrel kisses. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't so much of a the kiss. It was more like, I need to kiss you. Girl. <laughs> yeah. So that was probably Arthur's first kiss. <laughs> Poor Arthur. Oh. But he didn't really kiss the squirrel when yeah. he was a squirrel. That's true, he got kissed at. Yeah, I don't think we can go on that one. No. Hey. Do it. Ooh, I just don't want to think about the music in this one. No, there wasn't. No, no, no love, no duet, no points. Are there any hit songs? Because none of them seem very iconic to me. Yeah. Also, his singing was terrible. <laughs> I wonder is true. who they picked out of the voice actors to make him sing because. For every high there is a low, for every two there is a fro. <laughs> Good yeah. effort. <laughs> yep. I couldn't find anything about Sorry. anything on the charts, so yeah. Let's move on. I don't think so. Witchy villain? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Quite the witch. According to her, the most powerful. She was like Merlin's competitor, adversary, and she relished in being evil. Yeah, but evil. She was funny evil. And witchy. Yeah. yeah. Just for that that short, you know, she appeared yeah. in the movie for about ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah, and She's a good villain. I thought it was brilliant. You know, she was a, a fun villain, but you know that was it. Like, yeah. she, she just no, like one scene. Yeah, so it would have been, I think, a lot better if she had been the villain right from the start and yeah. kind of woven through the plot. You was know? trying to you know come in between Merlin and his his desire to get Arthur to yeah. the throne. Yeah. yeah. But no. As it is, you know, Arthur just pops into her house and, oh yeah, by the way, she's the bad one. Yeah. That was it. Ugly villain. Yeah. 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 And ugly. there was that scene where she turned uglier. I can make myself even uglier yet. Wow, that'd be quite a feat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> She's self-proclaimed both Ooh. ugly and witchy, oh, so yeah. there you go. Yeah. Good job, Madam Mim. Death by falling. Uh, the closest we have was in the wizard duel, right? Yeah. Madam Mim is as a rhino lodged inside a tree, and Merlin turns into a goat and butts her off, and if she didn't break the rules and come up as a dragon... Madam Mim's eyes were lime green. Oh, yes! Lime uh -huh. green. Yes, you're right. right. Good. It's Another either. unofficial point. Alcohol. Oh yeah, and yeah. they're like cheers into K or whatever his name is, right? It's yep. K. It cheers into K. K and it was wine, pretty sure. Yeah, it wasn't over. They didn't say exactly what it was. There, there was were no, no drunkenness scenes. And it was sure the Middle was Ages, so yeah. Yeah. they couldn't drink wine the water. Was all they had. So they had to drink. <laughs> they didn't have too many other options. Or, yeah. 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 Missing parents. Yes, definitely. Yeah. They say right in the movie that. Arthur is a foster child. Yeah. And he had been adopted. So we don't know what happened to his parents, but he kind of, that made him the underdog. He got a little picked on and, mm -hmm. you know, assigned the lowly tasks. It couldn't be a knight. Yeah. Yes. But I still didn't feel that much sympathy for him. Yeah. You know? It's because of his funny voice. Yeah. I don't know. I felt sympathy for him. I'm going to be a squire. <laughs> Where Arthur stuck I do love awesome. mocking him, honestly. His voice. <laughs> dad with a stash. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, King's dad. Actually, there's a great scene at the end with all the knights and see a great array of stashes. Yes. Yeah. This guy dressed in black with a big booming voice. Let the boys draw. Yeah, he was the best voice actor in the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Talking animals. Yes. Yeah. The owl talked through the whole owl movie. Archimedes. Archimedes, the yeah, owl. <laughs> and it didn't really seem to bother Arthur yeah. that much. Or anyone. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just like, gosh, he can talk. Wow, your owl talks. And even like, Kay's dad, I forget his name, Erkin or whatever. He was like, just talking to them. I was like, right, no, I mean Merlin. It was like, that was it. That was all he got out of the talking owl. It's like, unlike the partnership. I saw them 
one. I really, really thought of one this time. Okay. What, what is it? Arthur and Archimedes. Archimedes? <laughs> Archimedes. Yeah, Ella. Okay, how does that work? What did Arthur have that Archimedes wanted? Arthur wanted help and Archimedes helped him. And what did Arthur have that Archimedes wanted or needed? This is where it all starts to fall apart, eh? A sword? I feel mm -hmm. like Archimedes didn't really like him, but he was stuck with him, but that's about as unlikely partnership like as it gets. Like, I don't yeah. think Arthur yeah. minded Archimedes. We don't I don't think so. I can <laughs> hit a Mickey. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. we spotted a couple. Yeah. There was a lot of bubbles in this one, so yeah. after 18 movies, when we see bubbles, we're just like, yeah, there's probably a hidden Mickey in there. Yeah. But there were a couple of more interesting ones. Uh, the one that I liked the best was when Madame Mim the dragon got infected by Merlin's virus, yeah. and she breaks out in spots, and on her chest, for one frame, there's a hidden Mickey of those spots. Yeah. I thought that was really good. Yeah, Mickey I... Mouse says chicken box. <laughs> book intro. It was based on a book. <laughs> yeah, there was a book intro. Very pretty. And I also really liked how once the book was opened, it was a minstrel with a lyre in the back, you know, singing and singing the words for the book. Resurrection. Nope. Unless you count that wolf. It got cracked over the head so many times. Yeah, nobody actually died. It was quite lighthearted. Yeah. Miss Madam. Oh, there's there's yeah. a lot of peril, but no one died. So, Jai, what is our total for Sword in the Stone? Eight out of fourteen. Eight out of fourteen. Wow, that's pretty good, actually. You know, you can tell it's a Disney movie as you're watching yeah. it, yeah. you know? You can also tell why it's not one of the classics. Yeah. Because you know, there's a few things missing. Mm -hmm. And also, we have reached 25, 25 subscribers! subscribers. Yay! We're gonna give away some art! Yay! Uh, Yay! We promised when we reached that we would give away a piece of Jaira's art, so... One of these or one of these? You have... One of anything, I just, these were the ones that were hanging around. Ellie, do you want to pick a number between 1 and 24? Okay. 8. Number 8, All let's right. see. Congratulations, Aaron Duncan! Yay! Yay! You win the art, so we'll talk. Yeah. So thank you so much to everybody who watches our videos, and uh, we'd love it if you commented below things that you enjoyed from Sword in the Stone or things that you didn't like. Uh, let's talk about this little-known Disney movie. As well, like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll be doing another art giveaway when we reach 50 subscribers. Okay, thanks for joining us from the Disney Couch. Bye! Bye. Now can we watch the bonus feature? As long as there's no singing. Sadly, this was the last movie that Walt Disney actually worked on before he passed away in 1966. <laughs> Sorry, it's not like, funny! <laughs> it's like, oh, Walt died? Interesting! <laughs> okay. okay, that's sad. We tried to... <laughs> <clears throat> and sadly, The Sword in the Stone was the last movie that Walt Disney got to work on. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> it has no sympathy at all.